Hi there, I'm Dave Carter here at the People and Entertainment Weekly Video Studio at the Toronto International Film Festival. And I'm so happy to be here with the star and the director of the film The Menu, Ray Fiennes and Mark Mylon. Great to see you both. Thank you. This movie is crazy. That's the only way to describe it. If anyone watches the trailer, you get a hint of what you're in for, but just a hint. Mark, I'm curious to know what you first thought when you read this very loopy script by Seth Reese and Will Tracy. Will Tracy is one of the writers on Succession, which you direct and produce, so there was a history there. What was your first response when you read it? Um, I couldn't believe how such extraordinary things could be happening, and yet I believed every moment of it on the page. <laughs> um, that was what was so intoxicating about it. It didn't feel heightened. It felt like I could really believe that these things could happen. Um, Rafe's character, Sloic, it just creates this world which is uh, completely controlled by him, and, and it felt like uh, every detail every moment was expertly crafted. And, and this came across on the page, and I can't speak for Rafe, but I think it was one of the things that attracted him perhaps to the character in the first place. It was just, um, it felt like a fully realized world which, where extraordinary things could happen. Um, and that to me was really intoxicating. Well, I mean, any chef you see on TV, you can, it's, you can tell they're intoxicated by some sort of power. This is to the next level, this chef. It's a delicious character, to use a pun. What was it like for you to tackle it? I think one of the challenges was to get... I'll use that, too. Well, I think, so I, th I think one of the challenges was to get the tone right yes. for the chef, a kind of rational, a kind of openness, so that whatever weird stuff's going to happen, it's not, too, it's not sort of signal, you know. That, also, I love him. <laughs> he's, cra he's crazy, but I kind of like him. I, liked, I sort of I related to him. Really? Yeah, you can... <laughs> How? Well, I, I, I can... He's sort of... He's complicated about having had success and then sort of feeling he's sold out. And I can... I sort of have a window on that, might, what that might feel like a bit. You know, you're kind of... You start off with purest intentions and then things happen to you and the world comes to you, and, you know, and you, the light is shone on you a bit and <laughs> suddenly, you know, you, are, you, are you somehow devaluing what you've set out to do? I think that those complications in the character. Yeah, I, that, that, that kind of tragic comic element to to the to the tone of the piece is is through Slowix eyes, isn't it? It is because uh, so much of what he's done is it seems motivated by self-loathing. Mm. Instantly, when you meet the characters in this film, there's 12 diners at your restaurant because that's all the restaurant takes each night. As an audience member, you pretty quickly decide who you are. I definitely felt like I was the Nicholas Holt character. I would be the one who would be way into everything and wanting to... Are you a foodie? I, I, I am a bit, yeah. and I'm also a bit of a people pleaser, right? So yeah. I think I would have been the person who wanted the chef to notice me and like what I was doing, and I wouldn't have taken pictures of the food, though. Okay. Because like okay. if I was told not to, I wouldn't have done it, chef. I would not. <laughs> but then you have all these other characters. You have the Anya Taylor-Joy mm. character who couldn't be less interested in what's mm. really going on. You have Janet McTeer coming at it from her food critic point of view. You have the rich couple, Reed Burning and Judith Light. Who would you two be in this situation if you were at a restaurant like Hawthorne? Oh, I'm definitely an Anya. Um, I, I, again, you know, reading the script, this idea of looking in on a world, a, a world that is so exclusive, that seeks to actively exclude um, through price point or just... Uh, or, or, or just connection um, culturally, that, that to me, um, I wasn't a foodie um, coming into the project, but the, the kind of deep dive of research into that world was fascinating in itself. Uh, but, uh, but, but Anya's character coming in and, uh, and kind of po pointing and calling bullshit on it, um, that's, uh, that's closer to me. How about you? I'd probably be a cross between John Leguizamo and Nick Holt. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you know who I am kind of a thing? Well, yeah, I, I think I know the chef, or this is so great, and then right. I know about food a bit too. I'd be a bit of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many great performances. You mentioned John Leguizamo, mm. Janet McTeer, Judith Light. They're all so great. Mm. From an actor's point of view, obviously you're in character, but from an actor's point of view, who was really fun to watch? Oh, yeah, I know I love what, because a lot of the time I'm watching and I get to watch all these uh, wonderful, brilliant actors. Now, I mean, I, I can't say there was no best. They were all just, everyone was so amazingly in character and the little relationships going on each table. <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I think Janet McTeer is a food critic, is, is already a colourful 
character on the page and she nailed it. It's wonderful. And John Leguizamo. I mean, I'm, I became a fan of every single actor in the, in the film, just watching. It was, it was, and, and Mark, I have to say, you do create a wonderful atmosphere, a company atmosphere, so everyone feels they're, you know, they're a team. Mm. That, that was, made it a very happy shoot. I also love Hong Chao as kind oh, of brilliant, your, brilliant. As Sorry, your right yeah, hand. Hong Chao. Yeah. She, Abby, she's so terrific, yeah. and you can you buy everything, even when she's such a really such a tough character. On the on the page, you know, the broadest, biggest character, and I was I was so aware of that in, in trying to find the right actor for that part, where where it could be every, all that wonderful of weirdness, strange and scariness, um, yeah. uh, and, and also find a, a humor through through do playing the tragedy of the character again. Um, and Hong just absolutely mm. I I instinctively understood that and played it so straight, and, and, and as such, it was absolutely hilarious to me. Mm. Um, just such a smart actor. The, all, all of the cast, we, Mary Vern Vernu, the casting director, and I worked so hard to get these actors who were so intelligent, who, mm. could, who could just roll with the characters we do takes of whole improvisation and they could just be in the moment the whole time. Um, mm. And they were just so open to that approach. It was really fun to play. Given that this film, it's not real time, but it's one night, mm -hmm. and the sequence of events and the arc of what's happening with the story is so important, mm -hmm. and so many physical changes happen as the night the restaurant goes on, were you able to shoot in some sort of sequence? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm that, sure that, that was... That was a great thing, that we were shooting pretty much in sequence, which was... And we, I think we had to for, for practical reasons. I mean, it was hugely important to do it, wasn't it? Because just to find that arc of... Uh, we wanted to play this, this arc of kind of increasing kind of realisation of culpability for the, for the diners uh, as, as chefs' words drip into their ears and mm. they, they, they come to accept and, uh, and understand why they're there, why they're being punished somewhat. Um, so... The only way to do that and give everybody a reasonable chance of that arc was to shoot chronologically, um, and uh, also because you know we specifically wanted to gradually go from from end of day into night. Um, so, so we wanted the light to, to work, and, and actually just making those graduations to kind of put a spotlight and to put more pressure onto the characters. For all of those reasons, it completely made sense to, to shoot in order, and also just to have the tension always be rising, how, in a practical or even mathematical way, did you make sure that you, it was always ratcheting up? Did you have words that you would say to the actors just to make sure that they knew how to calibrate the tension level? We, we calibrated as a group. It was such a, as Rafe says, it was such a company um, that, that we all, because we were virtually all on set all the time, all together, so that there would just be conversations between every take as do, do we need to take it there, do we need to explore this? So, so we just felt it out amongst ourselves. Obviously I had it in my head as to where I thought it should be, but the, the, the beauty of working with such genuinely good actors, such great actors, is, to, is that we can all feel it together. We can feel the group dynamic of that. And so you can feel the calibration. If we go too hot, we know that we need to pull back because we still need to get to that place. Yeah. Um, so we just felt it out together. Rafe, as the movie goes on, I'm not going to give anything away, but it, it really becomes more of a two-hander with you and Anya Taylor-Joy. What was it like working with her? What kind of bond do you now share with her after going through such an intense experience on this? I love working with her. I, I, she, I really noticed her in Queen's Gambit, which I thought she, she was extraordinary. And she's a beautifully natural actress, and I, there were just sometimes when you, you feel the truthfulness of the person you're acting with just really helps you, you know, it raises your game somehow, and she's got that. And, you know, I, I just, well, they're beautifully written scenes because there's a weird, I mean, the chef really kind of doesn't really, he despises his clientele. She's the anomaly, she's the surprise, mm -hmm. she's not expected. And there's this bond that is built between them. And Mark, I think Mark is brilliant at nurturing the different nuances over different takes. I think we both like that, you know, both mm. she and I. And it's, you know, the good, it's good writing. The scene, the, there's some, you, know, you pick up a screenplay and the writing is a simplicity, a naturalness, and under, un, an undertow of tension. And the writing, and then there's something satisfying about you read a scene and you, when you first read it, and that feels good. And then when you, on the day, sometimes it can miss five. Oh, but I have felt with Anya that the pleasures of what the scene promised were we, we were enjoying as actors and we were doing it.
That's you great. did build to get, you mm. build the scenes together yeah. and just and it was a lovely kind of free form jazz on some takes. We do these things called freebies, but pretty much everything was freebies. Free he does Mark does freebies. <laughs> you he rings you re, re, squeezes you your creative juices dry, <laughs> and then he says now a freebie, which is great because you can sort of do any shit you want. <laughs> it's uh, free. And then, then and then uh, maybe there's a jewel in there that he might be used. There are one yeah, or two. Very, very often, yeah, just because yeah. there's something about that zero mm. pressure take. Which does, um, yeah. which can be really liberating. Yeah. Before I let you go, I mean, you're sitting here with the director and producer of Succession. Is there a spot for you on season well, four or five? I wish. I well, mean, you know, I, I was hoping. <laughs> what would you like we, to play? Your dance card is pretty full. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm winding him up. No, I love Succession. I was completely hooked by it, and I was thrilled when I heard Mark was going to do Menu. I thought, no, I mean, maybe he'll do another series, and perhaps there's a. Yeah, we'll find someone else to yeah. do that, won't we? <laughs> I, hope so. I, I hope, hope so. so. Too. The menu is really bonkers yeah. in the best way. Congratulations, Mark and Ray. Great to see you Thanks, both. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Stick around. We'll have more coverage from the Toronto International Film Festival here on EW and People. Thanks so much.